and he befuddled the Orioles all night long. R.A. Dickey is now 4-0 and on the season as the Mets won the opener. Tonight, the Orioles will try and do the same thing to the bats of the Mets with their young left-hander, Brian Mattis, after win number three. on Masson and we welcome you on this Saturday night to Camden Yards and the middle game of this three game set interleague play with the Mets coming away with a victory last night over the Orioles and the O's trying to even it up here tonight. Hi everybody I'm Gary Thorne for the Orioles interleague play wise they have won six consecutive series here at home in interleague contests. They're going to have to win this one tonight if they're going to keep that alive and it is a battle of the left handers and for the Mets that's been a good note. The New York Mets are 12 and seven against lefty starters that 286 batting average not only the best in the National League it's the best in Major League Baseball against left-handers the Orioles exactly the opposite they have struggled against left-handers again this year that 245 average against lefties overall 11th in the AL their worst season 201 27 losses against left-handers so the two lefties go tonight Jim Bomer yeah you know and for Brian Mattis it's it's pretty much what we've seen all year long I mean he's lost six games in a row hadn't pitched well in some of them but they haven't scored him a lot of runs, 10 runs over those six six losses. And then, you know, for uh, Takahashi, he's been better out of the bullpen, but they need a starter, so they bring him in. He struggled in his last two starts, but then again, they've got him six runs in his four starts. So we probably have a pretty quick game tonight. Got a real good chance of that, because most of these guys throw a lot of strikes. Now, last night, the Orioles had every opportunity to put some runs on the board and just could not get it done. The runner in scoring position numbers last night, three for 17. That's a 219 average now in the season last in the American League against the knuckleballer. They struggled all night long, and especially late in the game, Jim, the chances were there. Yeah, they really were, and of course, uh, you know, against R.A. Dickey, I mean, he's quite a story. Again, you know, he was going to sign for 800000 didn't have the ligament in his elbow. He's a survivor, and he survived last night, got the bases loaded with nobody out in the fourth. Seven pitches later, he was out of the innings. The Orioles had all kinds of chances, and has they pretty much as they've done all year long, just didn't quite get it done. All right, they'll try and get it done tonight. Some 40,000 expected for the Saturday night game, and it is a summer night here at Camden Yards. When we come back, we'll check the lineups and have the first pitch game two the Mets and the Orioles.
baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. It is a summer night here at Camden Yards and a big crowd on hand for this one. Let's take a look at our train game time temperature. It is 88 degrees, partly cloudy skies and a gentle breeze blowing out to left at the moment. Visit trainsearch.com to locate an independent train dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. Starting lineup tonight brought to you by Southwest Airlines. For the Mets, Reyes, Pagan, and Wright, Davis, Bay, and Tatis, Barajas, Francoeur, and Tejada. Jose Reyes, the two-time All-Star, three-time stolen base leader, and he was running last night. And the scouting report on our uh, left-hander uh, out of Arizona, back in the groove. He said he's made some adjustments, and you could really see that in his last start. No decision against the Red Sox. Six-game losing scheme, so he's lost six in a row after winning his first two. And again, uh, one of the reasons he hasn't pitched well in some of them, but again, not a lot of run support. Of course, the Orioles last in the American League in runs totally, and you know, down there in stolen bases, on base percentage, all the important numbers. So you better pitch well, and you better do it against a team that uh, plays very well against left-handed pitching, and that is the Mets. The interleague play continues around baseball and here at Camden Yards tonight. It'll be Reyes who will lead it off, the switch hitter. You can tell a lot of Mets fans have made their way down, especially tonight, more so than last night for this game. Reyes had a two for five in the ball game last night. He's got a four game hit streak now, hitting 257. Switch hitter, hitting 300 right handed, 240 left. And the fans' battle begins just as the game begins. And Bunt is shown, it is taken outside for a ball, and we are underway. Great to have you with us. Well, he really does play the role of leadoff guy, other than getting on base, only on base about a little over 30% of the time. But he brings you in because he does fake bunts pretty much just about uh, every at bat. He's got Tejada. They could shake hands down at third base, and that's what you want. And both of those pitches a little bit out of the zone. I mean, Miggy would rather be playing back. And we saw that. I was watching a game. He, San Diego, they had him in. He hit it right over their head. One chopper. It into left field. 2 0 delivery on the way from Mattis, and he will take that for a strike. Since moving into that leadoff spot, he went back into it on May 15. He's hitting 313. During the four game hit streak, he's 8 for 17. Brian Mattis with the 2 1 delivery shows bunt and it takes it, and it is a strike. It looks like he really wanted to bump, but he's taking those pitches thinking they were going to be balls. Well, you know, I think you kind of like that in a sense if you're Brian Mattis, because last night what he did was he got the count in his favor and doubled off the wall. Pagan got him over, right, got him in, and they got a lead. When he scores, they're 21 and 6. 2 2 delivery. That one hit in the air to left center field. That ball is way back in the wall. Double last night, home run tonight. Reyes delivers the long ball and a 1 0 lead on his third home run of the season. Well, that's why you don't bunt when you get a young pitcher coming out of the bullpen trying to get his feet under him, and then you get into the hitter count. Brian Mattis stuff not good enough to pitch up and in the middle of the plate. And you can see it right here. Belt high, and he launches it to left center field. Third home run of the year. Next one brought to you by H.H. H. Gregg. We make buying TV and appliances simply H.H. H. Gregg. Pipe and advice guaranteed. That one hit in the air by Pagan to right center. Jones is there, and he's got it. The home run of the seventh of Brian Mattis on the season. Well, there's your defense, Patterson, Jones, and Marcakis. That's the outfield for the Orioles tonight. Tejada is first. Lugo Wigington. Scott Moore played second last night, and then Craig Tatum will do the catching. Matt Wieters at least initially getting the night off. Our defense brought to you by Cisco Federal, a proud mission partner to the United States Department of Defense. This is the inning that has bothered Brian Mattis. That's going to be the 10th run and the 13th hit. Brian Mattis has surrendered in the first inning, and this is 13th start. So 10 runs, 13 hits, first inning, 13 starts. One away, here's David Wright. DH went three for four last night. The one over to him will be put up in the air to Wright. Nick Marcakis meanders over. 
Yeah. yeah, so there's the first pitch where he really wants to be of the first three batters. He got Pagan up out over the plate. And then right there, all of a sudden, I mean, uh, Wright's leading what? Leading the National League against lefties, hitting 440, and he makes a good pitch. It's a routine fly ball. He wants to, and Mike Bod Boddicker talked about it with Rick Dempsey. He's got to pitch to both sides of the plate, but he's got to keep the ball down when he goes away. Fly ball pitcher, two and six. Has not won in his last nine starts, six losses and three no decisions. Here is Ike Davis. And Davis with a big cut. Davis had a one for four in the ball game last night, playing at first base for the Mets. Or Davis this season against the left handers, hitting 348. 16 for 42 with a 46 with a couple of home runs and only 228 off right-handers. And Gary, that one uh, one inning was the fourth inning when he got the base hit, and then Bay was hit Guthrie real well. He pitched around him, walked him, and then the three-run home by home run by Chris Carter. So again, that was that he worked the count into his favor. They're trying to get him out with breaking balls. He got the base hit, and then it led to a three-run inning. Davis has become the regular now at first, and in the Cleanup spot, and that's a big deal for the Mets and Jerry Manuel have tried to fill that hole. Since his promotion, he's not gone more than two games without getting a base hit. That one he had to reach for, and that will be bobbled and a no play and an error. Wigginton will be charged with the error and will keep the inning alive. Well, Weggy getting over there, and again, you know, just trying to backhand it. Anytime you backhand the ball, and it is a difficult play because if it comes up at all, and you can see it just come up a little bit, it hits the, not the webbing, but the heel of the glove, and then once it hits the heel of the glove, when you're backhanding it, very difficult to be able to stop it and pick it up and make the play. That's the ninth error charged on Wiggington this year, and it gives Jason Bay a chance, and Bay will take it for a strike. Bay has not had a hit in his last 12 at bats, including an 0 for 3 that he had in the ball game last night. 302 against lefties, 269 off righties. You see only three home runs for him so far on the season. Two against left-handers, and that's going to miss inside. One ball, one strike count on Bay. And you give him the extra out. You can see that it's not the first time he's gone through these streaks. 61 at bats without a home run. First, what, one home run in his first 32 games this year. 1-1 one, one delivery to him is inside. And a two-ball, one-strike count. All of these pitches now being thrown by Brian Mattis should not be being thrown as he should be in the dugout. And it's a very hot and humid night. Last night was perfect to pitch. Tonight in the 90s. 2-1 delivery on the way. They will take it inside. And the count now goes to 3-1. and one. And it's not only Gary... It's who he has to pitch against too. I mean, Bay is you're one swing away from another uh, another home run. I mean, that's the kind of power he's supposed to have, or he's had in, in past years. 36 home runs for the Red Sox last year. Three one runner goes, and the pitch is a strike, and the throw is not in time. So Davis takes off and gets the stolen base, his first of the year. Well, nice managing by Jerry Manuel. He doesn't need me to tell him that. But again, you know, they time him a little bit. He's not throwing over there. He's worried more about Jason Bay as he should be. So big jump, snap throw. Tatum can throw. Look at that. Right on the money. But there's your home run hitter getting another runner in the scoring position. Very aggressive base running by the Mets. Three ball, two strike count. Bay waiting and reaches and fouls it off. Against Brian Mattis this year, base stealers are now six for nine. Tatum has thrown up two of eight, but that was a stolen base that came on the pitcher, not on the catcher. It was a good jump taken by Davis. Three and two, two away. Bay with another RBI opportunity here. Three, two delivery again, and he got him with a strikeout. A run in on a hit and an error. Reyes, a leadoff homer, and the Mets have a one nothing lead.
Uh, conventional lefty. Got four pitches. You know, nothing. He doesn't have the screwball, splitter, but a change up, sinks it, curves it, a little bit of cutter in. Struggles on the road, much better at, at, at home. And then again, very much like Brian Mattis, uh, he has, doesn't have a six game losing streak, but he is run starved. Uh, he has come out of the bullpen to be a starter. Uh, won his first two. It didn't pitch well in the last two. They don't get him a lot of runs. And there are the numbers. Uh, again, just a crafty lefty at 35 years of age. Takahashi is uh, battling tonight for the starter's job because uh, John Main is making made a start today and is going to make one more in his rehab with a bad shoulder. And then Main will be coming back. And the question on the final spot in the rotation is between Main and Takahashi. And Jerry Manuel uh, said yesterday, I hope he makes it tough on me talking about Takahashi. So there's uh, something in it for him. He would like to uh, be a starter. Jerry Manuel would like to keep some pressure on for that starter's role. Well, we'll see what he does tonight. Corey Patterson had a two for five in the ball game last night. 35 year old left hander. First delivery and Patterson will take it for a strike. Takahashi is said to have a screwball but talking with pitching coaches and the Jerry Manuel he said it's just that change up that has that screwball look. He's got a little bit of the uh, Japanese wind up where he gets back. He's Patterson got that one to right field. Frank Gore looking and it's in play. Runner stopped. Well, yeah, because he entered. Ike Davis stood right in the middle of the bite of the path. The second base umpire, Lance Barnsdale, saw it and he called the interference, but Corey gets there anyway. Patterson will get a double and just missed a home run on the first pitch here. Well, here's your hanging breaking ball. He hits with one hand. It tells you that if you could get it off the scoreboard, it gets there in a hurry. And there's your collision we talked about. I mean, uh, Ike Davis just kind of looking. <laughs> and he was watching. Yeah. And of course, the first base umpire, Ron Culpa, he's watching the ball off the wall. He didn't see it, but the second baseman umpire would have awarded him uh, if he hadn't gotten the second base. So Patterson gets the double to kick it off. And that will bring up Tejada. Well, let's see what. If the Orioles, who struggle for runs, can do what the Mets did, double last night, Pagan got him over, Wright got him in. Can Miggy hit the ball to the right side, get him in? I mean, that's the intent here. Three for 17 with runners in scoring position for the Orioles in the ballgame last night, dropping their team average now to 219, lowest in the league with runners in scoring position. Here, as Jim says, against Tagahashi, it's not so much about getting him in, Tata would love to, but at least get him over to third base. 1-0 delivery on a ground ball the other way, and that is a foul ball. Right, the Tatis rather plays that in foul territory. Well, you can't always do it, but at least until you get the two strikes, you want the intent of trying to hit the ball the other way. I mean, it's it's about just giving yourself up for the team. Pagan did it, and what happened was, I mean, he, he gets Reyes, and now all of a sudden the whole game changes when you have a runner at third versus second because you pitched it for him. And as it turned out, Guthrie, you know, tried to get in on right, couldn't, got behind him, threw him a strike, he hits a single to left, and the Mets take the lead. Takahashi with runners on base. Opponents have hit 320 against him and only 218 when they're empty. So working out of the stretch, even though he's been a reliever, has seemingly been a problem for him in getting batters out. One ball, one strike count to Hata. Patterson off second base. And that will catch the inside corner for a strike. Tanada sitting 230 with runners in scoring position this season overall. Last night, top three hitters, each with a couple of hits in the game, part of the Oriole base running attack, but not crossing the plate. Patterson had a double, a single. Tanada had two singles. Marquecas had a double and a single. One ball, two strike count. Reyes moving in behind the base runner. Takahashi, 1 2. And he does get the ball over there. It'll be backhand to Davis, and he gets it done as he gets Patterson moved over. Oh, so well done. It's just, Marquecas is just wearing lefties out. Now, all of a sudden, it makes it so much easier. I mean, look at these numbers, and you were talking about Jerry Manuel having to make a decision. First time through the lineup uh, under 200, second time, third time. So obviously this is a guy that at 35 maybe, even though he pitched in Japan what uh, since 2000, 
mostly as a starter may be better suited for the bullpen. That is the issue the Mets are looking to. The, obviously, the Orioles would love to add to that decision tonight by getting some runs. The infield's going to move in here in the first inning with the Mets leading at one nothing. Nick Markakis a five-game hit streak, and that 368 number against left-handers is sixth best in the American League. And he gets the advantage of the drawn-in infield. And a speedy uh, Patterson, of course, at third base. Nick uh, in the five game hit streak. They have been multiple hit ball games, and he's been getting it done with extra base hits. And as part of the left handed pitching number, seven doubles and a homer against Southpaws this year. A check swing, he went around on that one. One and one. Well, that's pretty good against Lefty, wouldn't you say? <laughs> that's Six 109, 109 points are. And all good lefties that hit lefties, they're able to stay closed. That front shoulder, you see open stance for Nick. It'll come back towards the pitcher and cover the outside portion of the plate. One, one delivery, and that's going to get a run in, and then some way back and right, and that'll take a hop up and into the seats. A ground rule double, and this ball game is tied. As Nick Markegas gets the two bagger in the RBI. Well, again, Tejada gets him to third. He's thinking drive the ball. They try to sneak a fastball by him. And again, Takahashi doesn't have the overpowering fastball. Great swing by Nick. And that hitting streak uh, now, what, at six games? And that number against left handed pitching just keeps going up. 21 RBIs for Marikagas and Patterson who let it off for the double is on the bench for the run score. Here is Ty Wigginton. Wigginton with a four game hit streak. He had a one for four in the ball game last night. Tagahashi with that off speed breaking ball and is in there for a strike. Ty Wigginton who is still the leader for the Orioles as far as home runs are concerned. It has been a while though for Wiggy, not hitting any in his last 17 games, 56 at bats. Both of those numbers are season highs for Ty Wigginton in not having a homer. 35 year old lefty who gets the opportunity because of injuries, and the Orioles trying to get to the bullpen of the Mets quickly. One ball, one strike count. Wigginton will take it away. That's that change of screwball effect that goes away. 81 miles an hour. Well, it's very comfortable after facing the Fedits and the Lesters of the world and Sabathia's that this guy's probably not going to throw the ball by you. You don't have to really worry about that overpowering fastball, even though, I mean, he pitched very, very well against the Yankees and the Phillies in his first two starts of the year. 2 1 delivery on the way. Wigginton lets it go by. Takahashi falls behind here 3 and 1. First two starts, a whole lot different numbers than the last two. Mm, the Yankees in Philadelphia, the first two. San Diego and Florida, the last two. It's only his second game on the road. He pitched at San Diego. The other starts had been at home. 3 1 delivery on the way. Wigginton trying to drive one. Yeah, well, I guess you, you get a pretty good idea of what he's about right there. It's a fastball count, and he comes right back with a 3-1 changeup. Looks like it's kind of a palm ball, and Wiggy out in front. So he'll throw it in anything. Jerry Manuel said the hope of the Mets was that Takahashi could get his fastball back up to 91 or 92. It has only been at 88 or 89 over the past couple of games. 3-2 count, Marquecas on second base. One down. And we continue to stay alive. Well, again, you come from a different culture. You know, terrific baseball in Japan, but not as good as Major League Baseball in the United States. So, still got to adapt. And, you know, a lot of it, I talked to Mike Pelfrey, who we'll see, who's 8-1. He said, I'm just more confident. So, again, if you're a, a, not an overpowering guy, you've got to come over here, and you have to learn the hitters, and you've got to learn what works for you and what now, how did they get to see you? When they get to see you one time versus two or three times, makes it a lot more difficult to pitch when you're out there more frequently. Three two is going to be popped up. First base side, Davis over and reaches in and got it. This stayed with it, and that ball kind of came back to him. Wigginton retired, two down. 
See, that's what happens when you have a lot of Met fans. They don't go after the ball. No, they don't. I mean, this ball is actually in the stands, and everybody gets out of the way. Of course, you do that in Boston, they boo you. <laughs> ben Affleck found that out <laughs> when he went to catch a ball, and Euclid could have caught him, and they booed him. So two away with a runner at second, and Luke Scott coming up. Scott's got a four-game hit streak that he extended with a one for four in the ball game last night. At 277 now. Scott against the left-handers this year, 220, 295 off righties. Nagahashi trying to get out of it without further damage. They move Reyes almost behind second base. And that one grounded down to first is foul. Takahashi went to a school in Tokyo, played ball for the Giants there. He was a teammate uh, during the years of a number of uh, major league players, Hideki Matsui, for one, 10 years that he pitched. And in the Japanese Central League in 09, he posted the second lowest ERA of 2.94. He was 79 and 66 with a 3.70 ERA in Japan over a 10 year period. And I guess he had that one year where he had 15 saves, and the Mets figured, well, if he's not going to be a starter, then he'd be able to acclimate himself to the bullpen. It's funny because it, the, those 15 saves came in 2006, and then he went back to starting again for another three years. Well, a little bit like uh, Koji Uohara, who yeah. did both of those things. Owen delivery will come inside. He had to come back from a real tough injury. He, he was hit in the face. With a line drive back in 06 and had a broken cheekbone. And that took him out in that 06 season for about half of it and then returned. And you never know, those kinds of injuries can be mentally and physically encumbering. 1 1 delivery on the way to Scott and he misses down low, 2 and 1. And you can see he's not afraid. A lot of times lefties will not throw that change up to left handed hitters. But We've seen the breaking ball. Patterson hit it off the wall. But there, Duluth Scott just throwing him a change up and what could have been a fastball count to try to get him out in front. Terry Manuel said he likes to pitch inside. That's one thing he does like about him as a starter. He's not afraid to come inside, even though he doesn't throw that hard. Both righties and lefties, he'll try and come in and move him off the plate. 2 1 delivery, breaking ball, and that'll catch the corner. And that, had some, that had some curvature on it. You know, I used to talk to Paul O'Neill. I said, how do you win a batting title? Hit a lefty so well. He said, well, you hit that breaking ball, the one at you, because the one that starts in the middle of the plate and goes away, that's the one you swing through. But if you get fooled, and obviously Luke didn't see it out of his hand, then you take that pitch because you're just not ready to hit it. Gout is now 2-2 two and two with two down. Marquecas, the RBI double is on at second. Orioles have come back to tie the ball game up here in the first inning. And the 2 2 to Scott. Slow roller. Davis makes the flip and found the bag in time. But the Orioles will get a run. Patterson let it off with a double. Barcagas got him in, and it's 1 1.
Matt Weeders a couple days off back to back moving forward. He wants to get him on a schedule where he has about three days off and then gets maybe one, even two days off if they can back it up to a day that's a normally scheduled off day on the schedule. And it seems to be working early for Matt. He had Sunday and Monday off this week, came back on Tuesday and had a three hit game. And he told me it's not only because he has fresher legs when he comes back, but it's also the fact that he's been in the cage with Crow all day on his day off and he's getting a little more work in there. He said he feels like his swing is shortening up and he's getting on top of pitches a little bit better. So that's why he feels like the offensive production has been a little better after these days off, Gary. All right, and so Tatum is working behind the plate here. Fernando Tatis, who did not play last night, one strike, he's playing third. He's talking with the one Samuel about that today, and he said, what we're trying to do is balance the catching and the hitting. He said, hitters, good hitters, hit with their legs. And we are working leaders in so many games, the legs get a little weak. I'm trying to find the balance of where we get him in there to do the catching, but also give him a chance to have recovery leg-wise, and that will help him drive the ball a little better. Well, you, yeah, you're right. And, you know, I think sometimes you're going to want to still have his bat in the lineup and maybe DH him. We talked about that today, and Juan was very, he laughed uh, when I asked him about it. And, and said, you know something? You're absolutely right. <laughs> it's kind of on. Well, it's kind of unconventional because you're putting your two catchers in the ball game. One, two delivery, and a lot of people don't like to do that. To have them both in because it's this thing about what if something happens and then yeah, you lose your DH. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And Juan was like, uh, I don't care. He said, if I lose the DH, if I can get right, if I can get their bats in there, and he's hitting, and I'll put Weeders in and let him DH. And if I lose it, I don't care. 2-2 is taken outside. Well, that makes sense to me. I mean, especially when you're struggling as a team yeah. and you have the worst offense in the American League. A lot of managers won't do that, though, for fear of getting caught short and having a pitcher hitting in a vital point when you've lost your DH. 3-2 delivery lifted in the air to right, and that'll end up in the seats. One was really, today we were talking about the, how is he making decisions as a manager? And one of the things I said, how much do you look at the numbers? Do you look at the so-called go by the book? One said, you know, I look at the numbers. But he said, in the end, the decisions I make, including who's pitching against whom, is how I feel that day from what I've seen the guy do the last time out. In the air to center. Jones is there, and he's got it. Tatis is retired. Tomorrow, the first 10,000 kids, 14 and under, at the Orioles Mets interleague game are going to get that reversible Orioles floppy hat. It's the kids sized version. Well, we hope you'll be here to take advantage of it. Get your tickets at 888 848 Bird, Orioles.com. That's tomorrow for the first 10,000 youngsters. And they're great hats. Barajas. Power. Swinging. Yes. Always. Doesn't. He really does. Even last year. With Toronto 19 home runs. He goes up. Good catcher. Ross will take that one for a strike. He was one for four last night. Final thing on what Juan said, something I hadn't heard a manager say before. He said, you know, sometimes I manage like manage like a player, and I think about what I've seen, how a guy's pitching, how a guy's hitting. How would I feel as a player about facing that pitcher? Either hitting or pitching. And I kind of go by that. If I'm sitting there going, boy, I don't want to face that guy from what I saw last night, the way he pitched, or the way he's pitching today, then I'll leave the guy in a little longer, or I'll make the change, even if the book says I should go another way. But he's kind of the manager. Well, he's a player. By God, he's a player. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I asked him about playing this kind of weather on AstroTurf up in uh, Philly. He goes, that's what we do. That's right. He was just at the backfield down in Philadelphia, and he said Mike Smith and I used to go down there on days we weren't playing, just to take ground balls and the you know the spring training when it was hot because we wanted to simulate what was going to happen when we had to play in July, in June, in August in Philadelphia on the turf. He said you never thought about it because that's what you had to do. So he is. He does react. He, he thinks that way like a player. Swung on and missed. Great pitch. Mattis gets him leaning out over the plate, his second strikeout. Well, again, and part of pitching as a starter is just getting yourself acclimated. I mean, not only in the big leagues in your what will be your first full year, but also coming out of the bullpen, feeling comfortable. You know, he ran by the other day and he said, listen, I've been working on stuff. I mean, he's a very confident young man in spite of what's gone on over the last six or eight uh, ballgames. He said, I'm trying to improve. I feel like I'm getting closer to where I need to be. Oh, that's all I want to do. Because he's got talent. And he knows how to pitch. Just going to have to learn to do it at this level. Jeff Francoeur now. Two down, nobody on. Takes one by the belt. And a one ball, one strikeout. 
Brian Mattis here at Camden Yards, two and three. A 4-2-6 ERA in eight career starts prior to this one here at his home ballpark. One ball, two strike out. See the numbers as a starter, home and road. More on the road, obviously. ERA better here. Home runs, only four here. One, two delivery. And Frank Gore will let that one go by. Frank Gore playing in right field. He had a one for four last night. He sits safely now in 13 of the last 14. Yeah, he's really cut his swings down and in doing so, he has cut his strikeouts down. And a swing and a miss as Brian Ellis gets his third strikeout. And a 1 2 3 inning. No Mattis, no walks, and three K's through the first two. In our something's got to give category tonight. O's have won six straight home interleague series. The Mets have not won a road series since September of 09. If the Mets win tonight, they will break their streak in the Orioles' streak. If the Orioles win, we'll wait till tomorrow. Yeah, they are nine and 18, and the Orioles what are 11 and 19 at home. A lot better than the six and twenty-five on the road. The Orioles will play tomorrow off to the West Coast for the week. Giants and San Diego coming up for the Orioles starting on Monday night. Tomorrow's an afternoon game, of course, here to wrap up the three-game set against the Mets. And the Orioles hoping it'll be a rubber match. Jones up, first ball hitting. That'll go to left center field. Pagan over. Jones will make the big turn, and he's got a single. And he's got a seven game hit streak. Take a look at the uh, Mets defense behind Takahashi. Uh, Bay Pagan, who can go get him. Fran Core, one year, 19 assists. He can really throw and right. Tatis Reyes Tejada. Uh, Ike Davis over at first, and Rod Baraja, second straight night behind the dish for the Mets. So the Orioles get the leadoff man on again. Takahashi had retired 66% of leadoff batters. Remember, it's only his fifth start, 20th appearance. The Orioles getting the first two inning leadoff men on. Here's Tatum. And the pitch is taken down low. Egg making his 12th start. A backup catcher for Wheaters. Checking down to third with Gary Allison on signs here. Tatum's had only 33 at bats. Yeah, we're working real hard to use the whole field. That, and we've seen him hit some of those hits, only seven of them, but to right field. And that one down to third. Tatis up. There's one relay to Hanna. Boy, to Hanna got rid of that in a hurry. Well, they have a really good, you know, rights one, two gold gloves. 
Dave Joust, who was our bench coach last year. I mean, this is Taylor May, Tatis. You know, Rice not playing tonight, but they turn that because it's Taylor May. But Reyes can pick it. What an arm he has at shortstop. And at the hottest, only 20. And there are two down. Yep. Well, he gets him to roll over. That'll bring up Julio Lugo. Lugo. Just two for his last 20, covering a seven game span. As Lugo getting the start at second base in the ball game tonight. And he will take the pitch for a ball. Well, this was a number. I mean, if you looked at Julio, two for his last 20, but I think if you're Juan Samuel and you see it, he's hitting over 300 against lefties, he's in there. Yep. If you had some options, you, you know, you. You, you could have put Atkins at first. You could have put Wigan at second, but to probably help your defense a little bit better, you have a guy that's hot against left-handed pitching. So I'm sure he thought a little bit about this, but it certainly makes sense. One ball, one strike count. That ball in the air, and Adam ball to left. Jason Bay right there, no runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on. Two complete at Captain Yards, and the Mets and Orioles are tied. Well, they're all looking forward to it. So they'll be in to hit. Interesting numbers so far in interleague play this year. Pitchers in the American League are hitting 88. National League pitchers are hitting 155. 088. 088. Yeah. The designated hitters are hitting 388 in the American League where they're used and 177 in the National League where they are not. So the numbers just kind of what you'd think they would be. Except here last night. Yeah. For Chris Put it in. A good one down the third baseline to Hanna Racing and got him. Yeah. So we pick up where we left off. Tahada against Tahada. And Miguel Tahada wins that one. Pretty special play right here because Tahada can run. He makes a good uh, play. Well, here's your Home Depot doing more in defense, and Brian Mattis is going to be very happy about this defensive play. Pounces on it. Just a great play. More saving, more doing. The power of Home Depot. Yeah, good and communication, yeah, too. There's Reyes who led the ball game off with a homer. Last night, it was Ruben Tejada grounding out to Miguel Tejada twice, while Miguel Tejada popped out to Ruben Tejada twice. And here in the first at bat in this game, Ruben Tejada tries to lay one down, and Miguel Tejada gets it. Reyes with his third home run of the season. 
Five game hit streak for him now, the leadoff batter. 1 1 reaches. That's going to be a base hit. Right off the bat, he was leaning over the plate for that one. And one of the few changeups that Brian Mattis, he got the fastball up, he homered. This time he gets a changeup up. See, again, if it's down, he doesn't quite get to it. But, I mean, here H.H. Gregg's going to show you. See, it's it's almost between the belt and the letters. So he's able to get a little more leverage and just ping it into left field. And now the track meet could start. 17th multi-hit game for Reyes. He leads the Mets. In that department, and he is second in the league in stolen bases. Now Pagan up. And Mattis will lob toss that one as Reyes was headed back to the bag. Reyes will try and get the read here. He challenges pitchers with a fairly substantial lead. Pagan waiting, and the pitch will miss outside for a ball. The guy last night had a one for five. He is a switch hitter. 250 right handed, 300 left handed. And his power has been from the other side. Three of his four home runs batting lefty. 1 0. Reyes not going. In fact, he was headed back to the bag on that delivery. And he's talking to Razor Shines about that move because he was. Darting back to the bag as the pitch came to the plate. Well, there's some deception by Brian Mattis. Count is one and one. He extends the lead by a half a step. Not going. Pagan swings through it. One and two. And a very, very quick. For somebody at 6 3, almost 6 4, again, not very high leg kick. I mean, great angle right here just to watch him. I mean, he just kind of slides that front leg, which is what the slide step's all about. Well, I, watching, I don't know if we're going to see Clayton Richard, who pitches for the Padres. He, he, incredible move. Impossible to run on. One, two delivery, and that one loop, not deep. Patterson coming. He'll get there. And Pagan is retired for the second out of the inning. Don't forget the T-shirt Tuesday's coming back to Oriole Park on June 22. First 10,000 fans, 15 and over at the Marlins game, are going to get the Ty Wigginton Baltimore T-shirt. So you can add that to your Birdland wardrobe and celebrate Ty's great start. Get your tickets in advance and save at 888-848-BIRD to go to Orioles.com. But two away, we'll bring up David Wright. Wright flied out to Wright. His first time up. One with a W, one with an R. If Reyes wants to go here, not running, and the pitch is outside for the ball. David Wright, three for four, two RBI last night over the last 11 games, hitting 462. He's had three doubles, two home runs, and nine RBIs in those 11 ball games. Well, the, kind of a classic statement of the obvious. He said, you know, I found, now that I'm going to turn 28 in December, that it's a lot easier to hit if you swing it strikes instead of balls. Ding, ding, ding. Because last year they just pounded him in, in, in when the Mets came in and he didn't have a good series. A little different story last night. Well, no delivery to him way inside. Good job by Tatum to hang on to that one. Because, I mean, if you really wanted somebody to be a franchise player, I mean, forget the fact that it's a huge ballpark. He can run, he can hit. You know, he's great in the neighborhood. I mean, he's one of the nicer young men you're ever going to meet. He can do just about everything to beat you on the baseball field. And he has been doing that, hitting at 282 this year, 42 RBIs. 2 0 count. That one will be fouled off. Take a look at the numbers against the left handers with the highest averages. These are in the National League. David Wright on top, ahead of Marlon Bird, Andrew McCutcheon, Orlando Cabrera. Dan Ugla, 440. It's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good neighborhood. Two ball, one strike count. Company to be in there. Yeah. Gray is still at first, and they got him. And he just stands there. Picked off. He had actually started back to the bag. He might get credited with a pickoff for that. No runs, one in, no errors, and nobody left on. And it remains a 1 1 game.
A young pitcher. And helped his own cause right there. Uh, facing only three and leaving right with his at bat to continue. Orioles will have his tourists. Patterson and Tejada coming up. The O's are two and five on this current homestand that will conclude tomorrow. During the homestand, they've hit 264, 2.9 runs a game, but the team ERA has been 5.82. Striders are, he picked up one win and have lost five. And that will be taken by his tourists. He had an 0 for 4 in the ball game last night. Cesar is tourists. Interleague play. He's gone one for nine this year. Left hander. Michael Hunch's pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. Well, there's that 89 you talked about. And of course, Mattis made a mistake to Reyes. He homered. Takahashi in the first got a slider up to Patterson. He doubled and scored. Takahashi has given up 11 runs in the last two starts that he's had. That's how bad they have been against Florida and San Diego. So the Mets were really not quite sure what they were going to get here. Two good ones as we showed you, two bad ones. And here's number five in the fight for the fifth spot in the rotation. One ball, two strike count. And his tourist fouls it off again. Well, it's an opportunity. They come in. I mean, under nine and eighteen, as you mentioned, they hadn't haven't won a series since last year. The Orioles aren't playing particularly well. Mattis is pitching well, though. They do give up what two point seven three runs at home and over five on the road. The Orioles would like to take advantage of that, but that's you got to get the hits. One two delivery on the way. It'll be bounced. It is the enormous difference in that home and road record 24 and 10 compared to 9 and 18 that has been the talk of the Mets and as Jim says it is if you go up and down the numbers at least it's in that ERA that's where it all shows up 502 on the road 273 at home. I mean the run production is less on the road a little but it's that ERA yeah, about a half a run so yeah. it's not demonstrable. Into but, the screen, two and two. But when you're scoring, what are they scoring on the road? Four point one five runs and giving up five. That's that's why you're nine and eighteen. Yeah. It's bad. Just the pitching on the road has not been able to get it done. Two ball, two strike count. Is Torres trying to get on and give the Orioles three for three and leadoff batters getting on? The two two. Fouled into the seats. Oh, that's what Terry Manuel was talking about. I mean, he's got Dan more than the pitching coach for the Mets was saying, you know, kind of conventional. So he rocks back, and what's this? A little hesitation right here, 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 there, a little pause. Of course, he can do this from the windup, and then look at him drive. That was a little guy at about what five ten. That hesitation. And his first hit of that, and the two two after fouling off a couple. He gets a leadoff single, and all three leadoff men have been on to the O's. So the game doesn't really change. Doesn't matter if you're good or bad, but if you want to be good, you can't throw curveballs in the middle of the plate. If you want to be a good hitter, you can't miss them when they do. And Cesar is curse all over that hanging curveball. I mean, settled right where you want it if you're a hitter. And the Orioles get hit number four in this 1 1 game. Now, Corey Patterson, who doubled and scored in the first inning, will stand in. Corey's had uh, good interleague play numbers. He's now seven for 19 this year. Orioles have a win and three losses against the National League, with this being their second interleague matchup, the other against the Nationals. Nobody out, runner on at first base. Showed bunt, dropped it, dragged it. Good one. Took a perfect play to get him. It'll be a sacrifice as Torres goes down to second base. Yeah, this is a bunt for a base hit. It'll be scored a sacrifice, but this is Corey Patterson, as we've seen him do, try to get it by the pitcher, which he does it here. Nice play by Kizunori Takahashi to, to get the out, but they do get a runner into scoring position. You stay out of the double play, and you get a guy that's really been hitting the the ball well in, in Miguel Tejada. Tejada will get his second RBI chance of the game as he had a runner at second in the first inning. He got the job done, though. He moved him up to third by hitting the ball on the right side. Now he's got another runner with one away. So here 
He would like to get the RBI. To Adam, month of June. Closing in on the 300 mark, hitting 295 coming into this ball game in this month. Puts that one in the air, center, not deep. Behind second base shortstop Reyes, and he's got it. This summer, your kids can learn how to play like the pros from the pros. That's the Orioles Summer Baseball Camp, ages 7 to 16. Five days of training, current and former O's. You get into the Junior Orioles Dugout Club, and you get to play here at Oriole Park. Adam Jones is scheduled to be at the summer's first cap camp in Westminster. That's June 21 through the 25th. For details, dates, 410-472-3500 or Orioles.com. Interesting combination. Two down. Here's Nick Marquegas. Nick with the RBI double. His first time up. This Torres, the base runner at second base. And the pitch is in there for a strike. This is where Nick has had an outstanding number. Runners in scoring position and two down. He's hitting 450. Nine for 20. A he's really having he a, he's having a good year. People want to dwell on the fact he hadn't hit a home a lot of home runs. I don't think he's a home run hitter. He's a guy that's capable of hitting. It. He's a high average hitter that'll walk, drive the ball all over the field. Should be a Gold Glove guy. But just because you don't hit home runs or you don't haven't hit as many as he, he would like or other people doesn't mean you can't flat out hit because he can. And he's upped his uh, runner in scoring position number now overall to 319. I mean, he's once again is going to lead the Orioles in that uh, department. And of course, last year he had Brian Roberts get him on base on his way to about 56 doubles. 1-1 one, one delivery to him. Fastball is up high. And again, that fastball, 89 miles an hour. And a two-ball, one-strike count on Marquegas. And in the Yankee series... You know, he got three hits that I can remember on breaking balls. So, you know, fastball for the double the first time. You'd think this would probably be a slider, but it, the way he's been swinging everything, so there it is. In the air to center. Pagan is there, and he's got it. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Three complete here at Camden Yards. 1-1. One, one. Mattis no walk and three strikeouts. The Orioles are run on four hits and an error. The Mets one two and zero, oh. and that will be fouled back as Wright leads it off. Fly it out. It's only at bat. The well, one thing Brian Mattis has done a nice job of establishing that changeup. So we'll see the second time as you can see 299 and then 389. The number is going to go down as he gets experience. Popped him up behind second base. It's a hot back. Oh, yeah. Luke, 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 Luke. 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 
Well, it's a thought. I mean, it's going to eventually be Tejada and Tejada, so. Got it. <laughs> Lugo makes the play, one away. Now, of course, it's not up. It can't be Tejada catching right. it. Yeah, if it was, it's the rules. Tejada would have run around. over there and caught exactly. that ball. He had enough time. Davis reached on an error his first time up. Former Oriole Frank Robertson's got a new job. Congratulate Frank and Major League Baseball. As uh, there's been a reassignment, Jimmy Lee Solomon, who had overseen the Major League umpires for the past five years, has been reassigned. He's going to cover the baseball academies and Puerto Rico in the minor league operations. And Frank is now the special assistant overseeing baseball operations, umpiring, and security. Oh, Frank that's, Robinson. Yeah, that's terrific. Great for Frank. Well, it's just great for baseball. Yep. And uh, good for Jimmy Lee Solomon. So it's a tough job, the one that Frank's taken over. Jimmy Lee's done tremendous work in the academies and baseball activities in Puerto Rico, and he'll be involved in civil rights game and the minor league operations. Ike Davis, one down, nobody on. 0-2 delivery found off the end. Stays at 0-2. The Mets are three and one. In interleague play this season, they've won the last two ball games they've played overall. Ryan Mattis with an 0-2 count. Shift is on against the left-hander. Todd is playing shortstop, the third baseman. Another one will just cued off the end of the bat. Well, those are perfect breaking balls. You know, maybe a quarter of an inch, half inch, a little bit farther outside, he might have swung through it. Because they put that shift on because that's what the scouting reports say. Pretty much straight away in the outfield, but when your shortstop's playing on the second base side of, of the diamond, you know he's a pull hitter, at least on the ground. Davis has struggled over the last 13 games, hitting just 208. And the uh, strikeouts have been coming a little bit. He's had 15 Ks in those. 13 ball games. Well, you know, it's interesting when you watch uh, a lot of the the games they played over the last week. Everybody's trying to throw off speed stuff to them. And of course, they did it against San Diego. They missed. He hit it 450 and a walk off home run. Did he go? Check it third. Nope. Then drop you on it. So again, I think with young hitters, you know, that's pitched against a lot of them. Get the scouting report. Better fastball hitter. You can see the big trigger. We talked about that last night and they could have called him out. Not, not because he broke his wrist, but how far the bat traveled. So he's going to have to make some adjustments to hit the breaking stuff because he'll be throwing a lot of it. One, two, delivery to him. That one is going to go to second. That's still Lugo. <laughs> and Davis is retired. It's time for our AT&T Mobility Trivia question. Who holds the Mets rookie record for hits in a season? The Mets rookie record for hits in a season. It's 48 years. It's a lot of seasons I have to factor in in a hurry. That is a lot of hits. Well, it's got to either be. That goes to third. So how does got that one off the bat of Bay? Reyes or right? And gets the out. Uh, who? Reyes or right? Okay. We'll get the answer when we come back. This ball game remains tied. Wigginton will lead it off of the O's.
overtime. Yeah, I, I thought you. I said I thought you tripped over David Wright's feet. He said I wish that would have been the case, but it wasn't. Would have been a good answer though. And then I said, you know, one time I saw Bernie Allen in Washington go to his left second baseman and he stepped on his glove and then fell right over. He said, I did that in the minor leagues. <laughs> Bernie has nothing on me. Here's Ty Wigan, and I was just looking at 146 hits in 2003. So what did David Wright? I've got to look up David Wright. What did they, where were those two guys? Wigan oh. swings and misses. He, uh, Wiggy came up with the Mets in 02 at the end of the year and then his first full year. It was 2003, and he hit he hit 255 that year, but did have 146 hits. Hmm. Oh, one delivery. We could have sat here all night. We never would have got that one. So let's see, David. Oh, yeah, but see, David Wright wasn't up a full year. He was, became a rookie by playing what in 69 games. He had 176 hits in his first full, full year. year, but it wasn't his rookie. Yeah. Year. yeah. 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 And then uh, Reyes. Two ball, one strike count. Wigginson popped out his first time up. His, again, was not a full year, but in his first full year, he had 190 hits. So Wiggy wins by default. No, he, that, he wins because he was his rookie year. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> That's why. That's fouled off, and the count goes to two and a two. We could rephrase the question in his first full year. Yeah. Who led the Mets? Not as a rookie, but in his first full year. So we have to change the whole question. But nice goal in time. And then we get to win. And I like to win. <laughs> That's right. That's what's important. Two ball, two strike out. And that'll miss outside. Takahashi. And getting to go after that. And Wigginson refusing to bite on it. Wigginson in uh, interleague play this year. Three for 17. He's had... One home run. He's got the only interleague home run in the starting lineup tonight for the Orioles. 3 2 delivery time, and that one towards short. Reyes. Nice scoop. Oh, what a play by Davis. And let's find Amber. Well, Gary, going on outside of the world of baseball today, the United States took on England in the 2010 World Cup. Half the Orioles clubhouse was glued to the TV set before the game. But many of the players told me they really aren't big soccer fans, but Juan Samuel is. He said growing up in the Dominican Republic, soccer was a distant second to baseball, but he remembers watching Pele as a kid, and so he looked up what team Pele played for. He saw it was Brazil, so ever since then, he's always rooted for Brazil in the World Cup. Now, on another note, Jake Arrieta represented the United States on the baseball team in the 2008 Olympics. He told me he doesn't know any of the guys on the World Cup team, but he does feel like they're part of a small fraternity of people that have represented their country. He said, you'll never imagine what it is like to feel that type of pride to have your country on the front of your jersey. And he said because of that, he's watching the World Cup and really rooting for the United States soccer team, Gary. That's great. And the both clubhouses had the... Uh Soccer on today, and players were watching. Uh, Brazil is my pick. Have you had a pick? You got a pick? I picked Brazil to win. Did you really? Yeah, honestly, God, I did. You know what I know about soccer? Absolutely not. No, well, so you can pick. Pick anybody. Who's playing? No, I don't know. Man. England. Well, you know is. Brazil's playing. South Africa, Argentina. I mean, you know, I, pick a country. I, 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 Ali told me Spain's the favorite, so. That is taken inside. Well, that's where I got my pick from. Ali uh, said the two finalists. And he likes Brazil. He likes Spain. Well, then I'm going with Spain. You're good. That's it's Reyes or right. Come on. Ali is our A2. Takes care of the audio for us and is a totally dedicated fan to as he calls it football, the real football. The two one delivery to Luke Scott and he'll provide a souvenir, but it's a foul ball. Well, I remember. I don't know when it was. A couple of years ago, we were in New York and. You know, one of my favorite baseball books is The Era by Roger Kahn, where he said 47, 57, Giants, Dodgers, and the Yankees. And they used to talk about if you went down the street before air conditioning in Brooklyn and whatever, you always knew how the Dodgers were doing because everybody's windows open, the radio's on. Well, that's the way it was with the World Cup. Restaurants, people were hanging in because it's, it's that time. Exactly. It's kind of like between geography and history when you were a kid on the radio trying to see who's winning the World Series when they played day games. Two ball, two strike delivery on the way outside. I was in New York when the World Cup was, uh, I think, won by Brazil that, that year. I was covering the Mets. 
and happened to be downtown in Little Brazil. You talk about a celebration that night. I started in there about six o'clock. It's only about three blocks long, and at six the next morning, I covered the three blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 3 2 delivery. Breaking ball. Another souvenir. Speaking of books, uh, Bill Madden was kind enough to bring the uh, Steinbrenner books up to us in New York. He's written a new book, uh, The Last Lion, and I've gotten about a quarter of the way through I uh, already would highly recommend it. It's a great book about Steinbrenner's life in baseball. He really uh, he cuts no corners. It's all there, all the shenanigans. All the things that were going on in front offices. I mean, all of it. Bill's just laid it out. And it's a good read. It's really interesting. And it's uh, been out for about a month now, I guess. Yeah, we hope that George's uh, health is as good as it can be. I know that, you know, he's been struggling with yeah. his health. But important part of baseball. 3-2 delivery grounded towards second base. That is Todd. <laughs> and Scott is retired, and there are two down. Tonight's Maryland Lottery hit it here fan of the game is Daniel LeBron from Baltimore. If an Orioles player hits the hit it here sign located in the bullpen, Daniel, you're going to win $100,000. To find out more about how you can become a fan of the game, visit mdlottery.com slash hit it here. And the right guy at the plate, Adam Jones. There was an article today. Uh, uh, about Mike Stanton, uh, Michael Stanton, and he was the big, strong outfielder for the, the Marlins, and they said that he hits him. He misses him and hits him 430. Hit a ball off, I guess, about 500 and some feet. Mm -hmm. So Adam's one of those guys, probably along with Luke Scott, the two strongest guys on this ball club. Big time streak. He extended to seven in this game in his first at bat. Career 311 interleague average. I always think when I read those, doing football. For ABC, there used to be a scholarship, $5,000 scholarship given player of the game. So I read that as $5 million one night. $5 million scholarship for the uh, player of the game for school. Uh, the car company that was providing those was not truly appreciative of that, actually. Are they, is that one of the car companies went out of business? <laughs> yeah, there's why. 1-1 one, one delivery, and that's going to be popped up. And Barajas is there to put it away. A one, two, three inning, and it remains after four. One, one. Really pitch well. I mean, you got a couple of balls up in the first inning. Change up up to Reyes the next time up. Other than that, almost every pitch has been a pitcher's pitch. All he needs is to keep doing what he's doing and hope that he gets some run support. And again, six losses in a row, but only 10 runs to work with while he was pitching during that time. Fernando Tatis. He flied out his first time up. 
And Tatis will take that for a strike. Veteran player who's got power. He can drive the ball. Well, he's done a great job pinch hitting for him. What is he is? Already Tatis uh, six for 14, and that's what he's going to do a lot. He'll be their pinch hitter supreme this season. Against the Orioles, he's had uh, a seven for 40. That's a 175 average, one home run lifetime. He can play third base as he is today. David Wright was given the choice of DHing or playing third, and David said, I'll DH, let Tatis have a day in the field. 0 2 delivery to center field. Jones is there. One away here in the top of the fifth inning. Yeah, Adam has really, you know, won the gold glove, but he has really picked up all facets of his game. Base running, running balls out hard, got some great jumps on balls over the course of the last week to 10 days. This is the type of game as you get into the middle innings where how do you get the leadoff guy on? Can you stay away from the extra base hits, keep the ball in the ballpark? Because it has the, the makings with these two teams. The Mets struggle for runs on the road, and the Orioles don't score a lot of runs. They, they could be very close. Here's Barajas up. Rod Barajas hits a rainmaker behind second base. Lugo backs up and he'll put it away. Chance for a real quick inning here. On Thursday, June 24, the first 15,000 fans, 15 and over, will receive an Adam Jones Jones mini bobblehead. This bobblehead uh, is part two in this season's interlocking outfield set. So don't miss your chance to add your collection. For tickets, 888-848-BIRD or go to Orioles.com. The Adam Jones mini bobblehead. Jeff Francoeur. Francoeur, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Yeah, steady diet of breaking balls, change-ups. Of course, he swings at the first pitch. Chance to make it even quicker than we might have thought. Hitting 382 over the last 10 ball games. The starting right fielder, 0-1 delivery to him. Goes after a fastball high in the strike zone and did not catch up to it. Brian Mattis going a lot of strikes here ahead on the count 0-2. Frank Gore has no at-bats against... Uh, check that. Is 51 at bats against left handers. And he's hit him hard. Well, the streak hitter, we talked about it last night. First 10 games, 458. Next 35 games, 137. And then up there in the 450 range over the last 14. 1 2 delivery, and he golfs that one deep, and it is a foul ball. Wow. Well, when he came up with the Braves, you know, a guy that could have played football at Clemson. He could run. He's one year, 19 assists. He hit for power, 29 home runs, did strike out a lot. And then started expanding the strike zone, but he's got tremendous strength. Yeah, that corner, for some reason, in this homestand is Matt. Ed Rapulano did a 360. <laughs> That's what he's uh, talking about down there. I mean, he had the call. But he just turned the wrong way and he found his he was facing the wrong direction. One two delivery is foul back. And it'll stay at a ball and two strikes. We've had three balls real close down there in that same well, corner. The other night there was what when Mike Flanagan was doing the game with you it was like about two inches or an inch off the outside to the left of that foul pole. That one's on the ground. To have it. And a one two three inning. That's seven in a row retired by Brian Mattis. Pitchers duel underway. 1-1. One, one.
It'll be Tatum, Lugo, and his Torres. Do up for the Orioles. Reyes, the leadoff homer, first inning. Is the run up there for the Mets. The Orioles answered in the bottom half of the first. A double by Patterson and a double by Marquecas. Yeah, both of the lefties have really settled down. And Takahashi hung a breaking ball to Patterson and then tried to come in on the Marquecas. He doubled. That was it. And then now all of a sudden, just like Brian Mattis, he's been able to stay out of the middle of the plate and pretty much down out on the corners. Tatum, a couple of hits and 15 at bats against left handers this season. He hit into a double play his first time up. Four hits for the Orioles and two for the Mets. The homer and a single by Reyes. He's got both of them for New York. The Orioles have had the single by his Torres and the single by Jones along with the two doubles, Patterson and Marquecas. 35 year old left hander, the 0 1. And that's going to miss down low for a ball. Nick Craig Tatum, as you mentioned, only 33 at bat, still looking for that extra base hit. He's never really been a power guy, more of a catch and throw guy. And as we mentioned, uh, not playing a lot, has really tried to utilize spraying the ball to right field. We've seen him do that a couple of times. Comes in with a fastball, and that's going to miss down low. So you think right here, maybe, just maybe, he will be able to get a fastball leading off this inning and do something with it, maybe a gapper. So Takahashi. Behind on the count, delivers 2 1. And behind further, a three ball, one strike count. Takashi has walked 19 on the year in uh, 52 innings. No walks in this ball game and no strikeouts for that matter. He signed with the Mets, million dollar base contract, two million in performance bonuses. And misses. So again, the leadoff man is on for the fourth time in five innings. Tonight's HD broadcast brought to you by Ford. Your local Ford dealer invites you to experience Ford like ever before. Ford, drive one. And by H.H. Gregg. We make buying TVs and appliances simple. H.H. Gregg, price and advice guaranteed. Pretty night. Nice. What a beautiful sunset here in Baltimore. There are some high clouds, but just adding to the color of the sunset. And we'll see how Juan Samuel, as the Oriole skipper, plays this. We go hit lefty well, but we want to get Tatum into the scoring position. He will take it. He's got Tatis moved in at third. Davis holding the bag at first. Lugo looking down for the sign. Well, when Julio is hitting at his best, he's a pretty good. I mean, he, he used to hit second on a lot of ball clubs because he could hit the ball to right field. Julio's got half of the Orioles sacrifice bunts. Five of the ten. Runner goes, hit and run is on, only plays at first. He didn't know it. And a great play by Davis. He had Barajas screaming at him, but he looked a second and almost tripped. And Davis saves him an error. Okay, you try to communicate, you work on it so much, and of course you can't see. You don't have eyes in the back of your head. So he's thinking, oh, I'm going to get the lead runner. And right now I know, I mean, great recovery, not only by him, but also by Ike Davis. Pretty smooth over there at first base. Nice glove. I mean, that's catching it with the runner coming by on the inside. He's going on the outside in foul territory to well, make the play. Big target over there at 6 4. And again, uh, uh, very agile. So that will move the runner down in any event. Tatum gets into scoring position as Torres has singled in his only at bat. Only one away. And as Torres will take the pitch outside for a ball. So good arm in center, terrific arm in right, a great arm in center too. And then, you know, Jason Bay played in Fenway last year, doesn't throw like Pagan and Frank Coor, but, you know, average arm, but Frank Coor can go get him. 1 0 count. There's Torres down the line, long run, Frank Coor over, got it. A little unsure of where he was going to end up on that. He kind of slowed down to make sure he didn't hit the wall. But he had plenty of room. And there are two down. That will bring up Corey Patterson. With Tatum still on at second. Well, again, what, three for 17 last night with runners in scoring position. Two of those hits didn't even get runs in because this is kind of a quirky park because it's so... It's so small, it's sometimes you, and when you're down by four runs, you're not going to take chances. Tonight, not doing very well with the numbers again either. One for seven. Yeah. 
And another chance. Corey Patterson a sacrifice and he has doubled and scored the run in the first inning for the Orioles. He will take the pitch for a strike at the knees. Tatum the base runner at second. 1-1 one, one ball game. Orioles trying to get the lead here and Corey Patterson looking for a go ahead RBI. Patterson with runners in scoring position hitting just 185 in the year. Tadashi comes inside to him. One ball, one strike. And it's kind of unusual because uh, Tejada, their Tejada, the second baseman, really, they play Corey Patterson to pull. And most of the teams the Orioles play, they play him more up the middle. So, again, there's a huge hole. He gets to buy the pitcher. It's going in the center field. 1-1 one, one delivery is going to be put up in the air. Not deep. Bay. Is there. So despite a leadoff walk, the Orioles do not score and will leave a base runner on at second, keeping this a 1 1 game. Bar on Utah Street. Gary? All right, Amber. And uh, maybe tomorrow for you to come out and see the final game of this series. Kevin Millwood looking for his first one of the year against Mike Pelfrey, who's 8 and 1, the ace of the Mets staff. Tomorrow afternoon, 135 first pitch. Goes extra at 1. And we'll be on for the ball game at 130. Ruben Tejada will take the pitch. A strike. He grounded out his first time up. Pretty clean slate right there. Yeah, Reyes, the only guy that's uh, caused the problems, home run and, and then an infield hit. The home run is just the only one that's done any damage. That ball to center is going to be a base hit. So Tejada gets a leadoff single. That will end the seven in a row retired. Our fourth drive of the game. Well, he worked the count at, uh, early on in his favorite in three and two. Just hit a high fastball. Want to throw him a strike? He can steal bases, and he ends up homering for the third time this year. Your local Ford dealer invites you to experience Ford like never before. Ford drive one. You usually figure again a guy like him doesn't hit a lot of home runs. The worst he's going to be is a single when he takes you deep. Now tries to bunt and missed it, and it's a strike. Emmanuel really playing this. As a one run ball game, as he started out doing in the first inning, in fact. Yeah, I would imagine what they'll do is try to get a run, and then, uh, you know, the bullpen's been really good. Starting pitching's been terrific over the last 23 games, looking like 12 and 3 with a 241, and then he'll just try to get himself into the late innings with his bullpen. Reyes does not have a sacrifice this year. One strike delivery. Again, squares. Drops it. Tejada. Over to first base. 
It is a sacrifice for Reyes. Ruben Tejada moves down to second base. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times guys have trouble bunting curveballs because the ball goes down. Not Jose Reyes. And again, with that speed, it makes a difficult play. So again, Tejada has to come in. I mean, he anticipates it well. And again, this is his first year as a third baseman. He's full-time third baseman. Did play some third base when he came up with Oakland early on in his career. Now, Angel Pagan. Pagan is 354 with runners in scoring position this year. RBI chance. Lugo's holding the runner very tight. And Pagan will take the pitch outside for a ball. And yeah, then you got the guy who came in hitting 440 with against left-handers waiting on deck. So... Obviously, when you're not getting a lot of runs, critical time of the game. And he took that changeup off the outside corner like he knew it was coming. Oh, 1 0 delivery, and that's going to be right center field in the gap. Base hit, late start. Tejada's going to be held. Marquez gets it into Wigginton, the cutoff man. Well, that's not very good base running because if. Now, if it's right at Marquez, you still run and then let your third base coach, Chip Hale, hold you up. But if you don't. If you don't know where the outfielders are, I mean, you're going to hold up on this ball. But, again, this is a young kid at 20. You know, last year, had a double-A ball. So, Royals get a break there. And, and uh, in a sort, because now Wright's going to come to the plate. But you don't get, they don't get the run. And Chip Hale went right over to him talking about where he should have been. Should have easily scored on that ball. Yeah. But he doesn't. So, a double play now, a possibility against a very tough customer. First and third, only one away. And here's David Wright. One down. Wright, a chopper. Runners coming. They need two. There's one. And did not get him. And the run will score. And the Mets take a two to one lead. A high throw that drew Wigginton off the bag at first. Well, Brian Mattis does exactly what he's supposed to do because if you execute, he does his part. Right here, perfect throw, and then right there, Lugo drops the elbow. You got to make this double play. They don't, and the Mets get a run. So a costly non-double play, and Rick Kranitz will come out. Brian Mattis knew who was running and that he had some time, and he took his time to make sure he made a good throw to second. Well, you do. So what happens, Gary, you catch the ball, but then, you know, you're throwing down the, the pitching slope. But when you catch the ball, you're throwing back up, which is an unusual motion. So you have to make sure you make a good throw. And then right here, I mean, the runner's not close. Just not a good throw. Boy, was that a close play. Yeah, but any time you have to jump, again, you, you put doubt in the umpire's about good throw. He just reaches out, inning over. You made a great pitch. You got the, the, the guy that's hitting the best in the National League against left-handed pitchers to hit a comebacker. And Wright will be credited with a fielder's choice. There's no error charge there. Well, he gets an RBI, too. It's an RBI is yeah. 43rd. And the Mets get a 2-1 lead. And now Davis... So again, an inning that should be over. Brian Mattis will have to throw some more. Yeah, it could have gone either way. Yeah. Runner goes, huge jump, but a ground ball to second base. Lugo's got that one and we make the throw and get the out. But big run scores here on a couple of singles and a fielder's choice, and the Mets have a two to one lead.
Brian Mattis. They need some runs, and they need it in the next four innings. Well, Fire Takahashi will go is always an issue for the Mets. He had his first seven appearances out of the bullpen. It is his fifth start. He has gone as many as six in the first two games, six innings. He will go to work here as Tejada will stand in. Tejada, Marquegas, and Wigginton do up in the bottom half of the sixth. Two to one now. Mets on top. Each team four hits. Tejada's grounded out and popped out. I think he's had a hot bat. 325 over the last nine games, including four multi hit games. Corey Patterson at the top. Nick Marquegas. And the singles by Jones and his first. And once again, the inability to get the runners in with runners in scoring position. One for nine. Oh, one delivered. And that's going to be taken inside. Yeah, that's the amazing thing. The, I mean, of course, there's Brian Robertson, PA, and you know, even Melvin Moore now playing with Colorado, but 284 to 219. You go three for 17 and you only drop a point. It tells you. It's getting to that yeah, point where you've had a lot of at bats with. A lot of at bats, period, and a lot of at bats with runners in scoring position. Yeah, they went from 220 to 219, going three for 17. That'll be the center. Begun. Dad is retired. Visit Orioles.com now for your chance to win the Matt Wieters Bobblehead Night VIP experience. One lucky winner, four VIP seats, VIP parking. It'll be for Wednesday, June 30, when the A's are in town. You could win four passes to watch batting practice down on the field and your chance to experience Oriole Park in a new way. You can enter at Orioles.com. Matt on the bench for the moment, getting the night off. In this beautiful evening here in Baltimore. That'll bring up Nick Marquegas. Marquegas has doubled in a run. And he has flied out. Nick now has a six-game hit streak. Marquegas will take that one. Yeah, pitch count probably will have a lot to do with it, even though it was a very warm and humid. That was the 70th fourth pitch of the night for him. So not a lot of pitches. Very economical. And fishing on both sides on the mound. 1-0 delivery. Nick is eighth in the American League in walks, 15th in on base percentage, and he now has 18 doubles. He is 11th in two baggers in the American League. You get the idea that Mark Akis is going to drive the ball only because he missed the hanging slider the last time, almost jammed himself. The slider backed up as it will on occasion. Fastball on the outside corner. Mark Akis didn't think so. Turns to Tom Hallion. Well, I tell you, Nick is pretty good at telling and discerning. Here are the numbers we thought we'd show you. We talk about two strikes hitting. Major League average is 183. Beltre and Ichiro are the best, along with Cano. The Orioles, Tejada, the 235 as the best number with a two strike count of some kind. 1 2 delivery on the way. And he's gone. First strikeout for Takahashi. Yeah, around the perimeters of the plate and then the low strike. I mean, look at Barajas's glove. I mean, this is a guy that, again, pitched for, what, 10 years as a starter. And not an overpowering guy. And you know, a lot of the pitchers from Japan, they come, they can make great pitches. They can keep out, stay out of the middle of the plate, and that's what you have to do. Barajas says he really likes to catch Takahashi because of the number of pitches he throws. Fastball, curveball, slider, the great changeup that he has. He can turn the ball either right or left on the changeup. There's a breaking ball. Braha said, I, I really get to call a game. I get to mix it up, kind of feel what hitters are doing. He said, it's, you got to be in it. And Takahashi is pitching because it's not automatic as to what he'll throw in any given situation. Ty Wigginton, here's the 0 1 delivery to him, and that will miss down low. 1 1. Well, I'm sure you probably read the article, and I don't know if it was the post to the Daily News about the glove that R.A. Dickey yeah. drags around. He said, it's breaking down, and Rob Barraza said, the knuckleball was so good last night, I got a little bit worried just. When he was warming up, what was going to happen? That's going to be driven up the middle, and Wigginton gets a two out single here in the sixth inning. And Rod said, I do know a guy, Rollins. I'm going to have to make a call because. A new glove. Yeah, I mean, it's apparently, you know, if you're a knuckleballer, I mean, he, what, Joe Maurer used it when he pitched out of the bullpen last year. Then I think uh, catcher Fole, who was in Buffalo when he pitched the one hitter this year, and, and Barajas uses it now, but he's going to go get his own. By the way, we were talking last night, fewest fastballs thrown by Dickey in a game. Five. He threw five fastballs. 
Threw us a couple of sliders, a couple of change-ups, but everything else was the knuckler. He said he really had confidence, and then why not? It was all over the place. Barajas said it was the best knuckler he'd seen him throw. Two down. Luke Scott, runner on at first base. Scott, and 0 for 2. He has grounded out twice. The Orioles now with five hits in the ball game. The Mets have four. Ty Wigginton with a five-game hit streak that he extends to that with a single. And it gets a power guy to the plate. For the two-out singles, you think you're going to get out of the inning easy if you're a pitcher, and then all of a sudden, you don't make a good pitch. And now, one swing. And then Scott's got that kind of power. They put the shift on with Reyes playing directly behind second. I mean, directly behind it. Well, that's all right. You know, the first time I ever faced Mickey Mantle, he hit a ball through my leg, and I was 19, and I go, oh, you know, I, I might have a little more of an explanation. Yes. And Louis Aparicio is playing right behind me, catches the ball, and throws Mickey out at first, and I'm going, he knows where Mick's going to hit it. So it's right here. I guess if you can put the shift on Mickey Mantle, I didn't know about it because I was 19, but it worked. There's a reason. Yeah. So it's all about percentages, just hoping. But again, you have to execute your pitches. Takahashi ahead on the count here, 0 2. He hangs a slider. I mean, it won't matter. Where he's playing. Playing right. I mean, you'll have a souvenir out in the flag court. Runner at first base, two down. Mets leading by one. Luke Scott. With an 0-2 count. And back with the fastball. Because of the, I mean, he relies on that differentiation, of course. I mean, his fastball is only going to be 88 or so. And he throws the changeup, which is down in the 70s. So he relies on the fastball looking faster when he does use it. Because it's not a major league fastball at this point. Well, there's his pitching coach. So you had uh, Dave Jows who just walked out. He's a bench coach. You got Howard Johnson on the right, the hitting instructor. Dan Worthen. Kind of game. I mean, it's anybody's game here. Two to one in the sixth inning. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way. And Scott's gone and didn't like it. Luke arguing with Tom A in the home plate umpire about where that was. Two strikeouts for Takahashi, both in this inning. It remains two to one. So well, Juan Samuel made it very clear that Alfredo will be the closer, David Hernandez will be the setup man, and that David could spell uh, Alfredo in certain situations, closing situations if need be. Gary? All right, Amber. So a decision will be made roster-wise with Simone ready to go. Brian Mattis here in the seventh inning now. 
So a two to one ball game. And Jason Bay leading it off. Bay, Tatis, Barajas. Bay's 0 for 2. He has struck out, grounded out. He's 0 for his last 14. And we'll take the pitch inside. For Brian Mattis, no walks, three strikeouts. Takahashi a walk and two strikeouts. Both K's coming in the sixth inning. Real good pitcher's duel. And once again, Brian Mattis faced with a ball game in which he has one run on the board for him. But he is controlling the things he can control, which is pitching well. That ball in the air to center. Going back is Jones. He started in and still gets there and makes the catch. Yeah, great speed. So he can run him down. I mean, he has a drop step every once in a while. And again, uh, once he gets going, and he can go, he makes it look routine. Where's the bubble? Nope, no bubble. Just the ball into the glove. Play by Adam and the appreciation of his starter. Well, you get an idea that the ball is carrying because Bay, it's not like he crushed that ball. It looked like he just kind of got it somewhere on the good part of the bat, but not one of the great days in base swing. Dangerous hitter right here in this situation in particular. Tatis has power, and with nobody on late in the ball game, close, he will not hesitate to try and launch one. Well, that is why, of course, uh, Brian Mattis wants to stay down. Look at the, the target from Tatum, and he just missed down in the way. Now, of course, you got to throw a strike, but it's got to be a quality strike. The only thing I, uh, Brian Mattis has done about as well as I've seen him over the last maybe six, seven starts is be able to pitch down and away tonight. And there hasn't been that many balls up and in. We know they're going to come in here 2-0. 2, and oh. two oh, delivery to him. Tatis got jammed. Slow roller. Barehanded to how to throw is in time to get him. And another fine play at third base by Miggy tonight. And he had one earlier against Ruben to and he gets one here against Tatis. I'm sure Tatis is going to give him Fernandez is going to give him a little look because he just made a great play. Nice stretch by Wiggy. Let's see. A little Brooks Robinson right there. Nobody did it better. A bit of cheating action by it's good. Ty He's Wiggy. Learning first off. Yeah. Get off that bag. Maybe a hair before the ball's actually settled in your glove. Good play by Miggy at third. And a good play at first by Wigginton. Here's Barajas. He has struck out and popped up. Two down here in the seventh inning. Reyes a home run. Right, the fielder's choice RBI are the two runs for the Mets. The Orioles have the RBI by Marquecas. The O's have stranded four. The Mets have left two on base. Three of the four for the Orioles have been left in scoring position. Barajas with the 0 1. And he fooled him on that one. He double clutched. <laughs> Yeah. Patterson coming over and there will be no play. And then he went into the launch position, which he does so well. Well, it's a curveball that was a little bit up, but he did get fooled by the speed of the ball because you don't want to be up in the zone against Rod Barajas because he is a home run guy. Barajas, one of the few Mets to hit well on the road. He's hitting 311 on the road with six home runs. Most of the Mets' numbers have all come at home. Two strike count. Barajas takes it to center. Jones back. And he's got it. And another one, two, three in him. It is seventh inning stretch time here at Camden Yards. And a good ball game underway. The Mets on top, two to one.
young pitchers are here now, and you're going to watch them grow, and they they will be the foundation and centerpiece if the Orioles no, are to be able really to have it. And why I like him so much is that he can get a guy out, and we've seen it tonight. He can get him out in about three or four different ways, and not too many young pitchers can do that. You got to remember, about two years ago, he's coming out of college, so yeah, exactly. it, yeah, you know, and so just rush to the big leagues, and you got to learn on the job, and and you have to learn on the job. And if you look at the young pitchers. When you have a team that's not supporting you very well, I mean, not even your normal run support. So again, you know, you know, some of the guys have changed their spots a little bit in the, in the sense that Perkins gone to the bullpen, Arietta came up, and you know he's going to be tested because now they've seen him. But what an arm he had, and he did it against the Yankees. So. I mean, this is what it's all about. I came up to the big leagues in 19, had no idea what I was doing, and you have to learn here. Yep. These guys are going to have to do that, and I did it with better ball club. One to win. Uh, this one very much up for grabs. Takahashi will work here into the seventh inning. Jones with a single, and he has popped out. So Takahashi going into new territory here. Six innings, twice the most he has worked this season, and this is his fifth start and his 20th appearance. Adam Jones in the ball game. Trying to get on again that leadoff batter, Feliciano. The hair warming up in the bullpen. That bullpen has not been used much. Well, they've got a lot of arms fresh out there. 0 1 delivery. Good pitch. There's that changeup that's down and away, and a two strike count on Jones. Well, again, for 35 year old lefty coming out of uh, the Yami Uri Giant, he's just got a great feel for pitching. And again, very rarely tonight. When he's even when he's gotten in trouble, has he made bad pitches to, to continue the trouble? So he just pitched him way his way out of jams by making quality pitches. 0 oh, 2 delivery grounded through him, second baseman to Hanna. Oh man, we are seeing some infield play in this game. Tremendous play by Tejada to get it over there with a little help from Davis on the strike. Well, again, Ike Davis is such a large guy with great wingspan. That again, you got to get a guy that can get to it. Watch this jump throw. That's Robbie Alomar right there, and then the long stretch. Ron Compass had a long night at first base. The umpire, because there have been some close plays. See the. It looks like he's safe, but again, Davis, because the throws up the line and because he's got that wingspan, gets the ball, and you're out. Yep. One down. Here's Tatum. Tatum has walked and hit into a double play. He'll hit that one hard to Reyes. And a couple of quick outs here in the seventh inning. Time for our Chili's game flow. Chili's. It's all in the preparation. This one about the two pitchers. Brian Mattis, no walks, three strikeouts. Takahashi, one walk and two strikeouts. And the defense behind them that has played so well. Miguel Tejada has made two good plays at third base in the ball game. We've seen a fine uh, play made at first base by Davis on two plays and a good play by Tejada here in this inning at second for the Mets. Yeah, the Mets are only at eight and eleven in one run games. I would have figured that the, you know the way the ballpark and all that with Santana, who hasn't gotten a lot of runs, that they would be a little bit better in those particular numbers. The Orioles are at nine and ten in one run game. 1 0 count on Julio Lugo. Lugo has grounded out and flied out. Takahashi gets a chopper to short. Reyes right through him. That ball just shot underneath his glove. And Lugo is on with two down. I would imagine that'll be scored a base hit. You know, Reyes is trying to time the hop and get it because he knows Lugo. Why don't you come out of the box? He's fast. The ball's away. And then again, that top spin. Right there, the spin doesn't get it. It doesn't get any faster, I guess, from a uh, by a physical way you can't, but it doesn't slow down any. That is a single. So Julio Lugo gets on with two away here in the seventh inning, and his Torres up. His Torres has had one of the Oriole hits, a single back in the third inning. He has also flied out to right field. His Torres with two away, runner on at first. Tawahashi. Will make the throw over to get Lugo back. Is Torres looking down to thirds to Gary Allenson, see if anybody's going to be running here. Is Torres against the lefties, 229, 214 off right handers. 
2-1 lead for the Mets. Orioles have out hit them 6-4. And Takahashi again catches that outside corner for a strike. Right back here tomorrow to wrap this series up and this homestand. Should be another great pitching matchup tomorrow. Kevin Millwood, even though he's 0-7, has pitched so well. And Mike Pelfrey's 8-1 for the Mets. 0-1 the count, two down. Soft toss over. Yeah, Jeremy Guthrie, he describes uh, Kevin Millwood's pitching uh, performances as job interviews. With the trading deadline coming up in, you know, 40, 45 days. A lot of interest there. Oh, it is. A lot of scouts here. Everybody looking for starting pitching for contending team. Getting to that point, whether you're going to be a buyer or seller, and decisions being made. Thought it was interesting. Kenny Williams, the Chicago White Sox, oh. really the first GM uh, I've seen to come out and say, we are sellers, which in effect means he's playing for the future, not the rest of the year. That apparently ignited a special little tay to tay with his manager, Isaac Guillen, that gets smoothed over in the papers this morning. Well, they also drafted his son, which yeah. most organizations don't do. And Ozzy said, I'd tell him to go to college if you're about six round or under. I'll give him $50,000. I want him to get an education, which does make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. And you get to play. And who knows better than your father, and if you're Ozzie Guillen, yeah. whether you can play or not. I mean, it makes perfect sense. It yeah. just, I think Kenny Williams didn't like the fact that he did it on a radio show instead of doing it in his office yeah. behind closed doors. You don't get many GMs that come out and say those kind of things publicly yeah. about being a, this early in the season. Even if you're, you know, kind of out of it, which the White Sox are. But well, you think a block is called. A block called by the first base umpire, Ron Culpa. Well, again, when you look at blocks, at Dan Ward, a lot of times you can't pick it up from the bench. Does the right leg go behind the pitching rubber? Oh, I don't really see a block there. It didn't look like he did anything different there no. than he'd done before. I mean, if the that front leg, your right leg, if you're left-handed, if it goes behind the, the pitching rubber, you have to go home. But he just lifted his leg, and then you have there's a 45-degree line. But I think if we drew that, he was well within that. Orioles may have gotten a break there. Let's look. Boy, that looked pretty good. Hmm. I think you got to be left-handed to know whether he blocked or not. Maybe Flanny will text us. 0-2 oh, count, two down. Well, left-handers never block. Well, like two, yeah. But they kind of know. They just you know, they won't yeah. own up to it. Yeah. So as Torres gets an RBI chance, here's the two-strike delivery. The Orioles will try and take advantage of this block. Now that's the first Takahashi has put in the column this year in the block column. And now a runner at second base with two away, and it represents the potential tying run here in the seventh inning. Wouldn't that be something? You know, the Mets' second run came on a botched double play ball, and now a balk that allows uh, Cesar to, to have a chance to tie up the game. It's good speed, but two outs, you know, we're going to be running on the pitch. There's the 0 2 delivery on the way to him. It's first in the air to left field. Jason Bay. And he puts it away. No runs, one hit, no errors, and another base runner left in scoring position. Seven complete, a two to one Mets lead.
really gone at it here in this first first two games of this series. Miguel and Ruben Tejada. Young and old. In Young a sense. And yeah, well, you know, Miggy's not old, but he's a lot older than Ruben, who's 20. And he's playing because Luis Castillo is on the DL. But very tight ball game. Brian Mattis staying in, hoping the Orioles can get some runs, get a lead for him. Give him a chance to win his third game. Francoeur is struck out and grounded out. Jeff Francoeur, Tejada, and then Reyes in the air, right center field. Marquez going back. That ball in the alley carries, and it is gone. Goodbye, home run. Jeff Francoeur. Just enough to get it out of here and make it a three to one ball game. His seventh. Yeah, you think you make a pretty good pitch, but then a guy, this is a guy that, again, is second year in the big leagues at 29. Big time power. Up a little bit. And again, he just hits it where it's pitched out over the plate and getting warmer in the 90s at game time, and it just keeps going. That might be a double, but it doubles up the. The Mets lead up to a two to one by two runs. Two off Mattis in the ball game, one by Reyes, one by Francoeur. And uh, Brian Mattis has now surrendered nine home runs on the season. And that will make it a 3 1 ball game. Leading off the eighth. Both homers lead off homers. Reyes in the first and Francoeur in the eighth. Tejada with a single and he is grounded out. And he will take the pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Only the 90th pitch of the game. So it's not about being tired, even though it's a very difficult game. Warm night. So those pitches, each one have had such tremendous import, which is usually the case for the Orioles starters. The Orioles have now been out homered here at Camden Yards this year, 45 to 26. It's starting to reach the two to one out homer category. Mark Hendricks and Jason Birkin in the bullpen for the O's. Well, and again, the, the the Atkins that plug in at first, nobody's hit a home run as a first baseman for the Orioles, and then Tejada has not hit a lot of home runs this year. And did he go? Yes, he did. Throw will be made. A strike up and the assist by Tatum. Time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. Here are the candidates tonight. For Brian Mattis, another strong performance, even though he finds himself behind in the ball game. Nick Marquegas has had an RBI double. Now is a six-game hit streak. And Reyes, the leadoff homer, a single in the third, and a sacrifice in the sixth. Text in your vote, A, B, or C to 518-62. Here is Reyes. Lifts one in the air, left field line. Patterson over in the corner, and that'll be a foul ball. Well, at this point in the game on a hot human night, and, and what's going to happen for Brian Mattis, he's going to find out that you really have to focus when you get a little bit fatigued, that you have to stay back a little bit and make sure you get the ball down, finish your pitches. So this inning, most of the stuff, especially to Reyes and Frank, we're up. So you just... Whatever the feel is, you have to stay over the rubber a little bit. You've got to get your arm out a little bit. And that's what pitching in the late innings is all about. And he will learn that as he gets more starts. Because you want to hang around and give yourself a chance to win these games. It's frustrating for everybody involved when you don't score runs. 1-1 one, one delivery. Reyes to third. To how to backhands it. And with that arm, gets it over. And Wigginton puts the tag on. And there are two away here in the eighth inning. Yeah, just that little pause hoping uh, for Miguel because he's got the great arm. And then the ball tails, but right into the runner. Nice tag by Wigington. Mets uh, are not one of the leading home run hitting teams uh, in any sense of the word. They came in tied for 10th in the National League in home runs. They only have, even with the two tonight, they are 51 on the season in homers. But they have made the home run part of their interleague success. That'll be down the line by Pagan and foul. The Mets home run wise now have 243 home runs in interleague play and only Philadelphia in the National League has more. And the Mets are using the long ball here in this series as they had the three RBI homer by Chris Carter last night. Pagan puts it up in the air. That one is playable. Jones is there and he's got it. 
So the home run by Fran Cor leading off the eighth inning extends the lead, and the Mets are now up three to one. You know, kind of congratulated him because I don't think I want to leave. Why not? Because the pitch count's low enough, but he will face the middle of their lineup as uh, Feliciano will come in for the second straight night at 36 games. Does need the National League. And tough against lefties, not as tough against right handers. And of course, Corey Patterson, a lefty, will lead it off, so matchup time. Feliciano worked an inning in the ball game last night. He actually gave up three hits in the inning, but the Orioles did not get anything off him. Marquecas, Scott, and Jones had hits against him in the eighth. A comebacker this time, Feliciano the 360, and Corey Patterson he is retired. You know, once again, what he did, what Brian Mattis did on the DP ball that Lugo made the bad throw on, he gathered himself because when you're around the mound, it slopes. It slopes one way or the other. So again, you got to get your balance, otherwise you throw it away. And the Orioles are looking for base runners, obviously. Takahashi out of there with a chance to win his fifth. He gave up only one run on six hits with a walk and two strikeouts over seven innings. So a real strong performance by the left-hander who had to shut the Orioles down in some innings as the Orioles have left five on base four in scoring position in the game. Left-hander Feliciano now. And a strike taken to Hada, 0 for 3 in the ball game. And the game is a little bit less difficult until you get a runner on. And that's what Chris Feliciano and Bedo is trying to do that. And the Orioles are trying to get a runner on. And the time run will come to the plate. The Mets starting pitching. And he quick pitched him right there. Yep, and got away with it. Todd is arguing about it. 1 and 1. Mets starting pitching now coming into this game. Their starters have gone 12 and 3 in the last 23 games with a 2 4 1 earned run average. And uh, Takahashi certainly did not hurt that cause. They're getting some outstanding starts. 1 1 delivery to Hato in a pitch that stayed away. 1 and 2. You know, it's interesting when you watch Feliciano. He, he two pitches ago, he just didn't come to a set position, which you don't have to do with nobody's on. Mariano Rivera does that. He gets into when there's a runner on, he'll stop. Otherwise, he'll actually be one continuous motion. So it's almost like a windup, except you start from the stretch position, which is when you're facing one of the bases. And you're standing sideways. One ball, two strike count. And another one that tailed away. And that'll be a strikeout. And there are two down here in the eighth inning. So against lefty, he drops down righties. He's able to stay on that changeup enough to be able to get it to move down and away from the right hander. 
So Feliciano gets a couple of quick outs here in the inning. Two down and nobody on. Here's Nick Marquegas who has doubled, flied out, and been called out on strikes. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Nick Marquegas hitting a 297, a six game hit streak that he extended in the first inning with the double that he picked up. Feliciano with two away, and Marquegas showed bunt, took the pitch. Feliciano, uh, left handers are 250 off him, right handers 319. Well, the amazing thing is Tejada five game hitting streak, Marquegas five games, Ruggington four, Scott four, Jones six, and he got one run. 1 0 delivery, and those streaks, of course, were alive in the ball game last yeah. night. The only run scored on a wild pitch. 2-0 count to Nick Marquegas. Well, the one thing when you look at the Mets versus the Orioles, they do lead the National League in stolen bases, and that translates into better defense in most cases when you have speed, team speed. And the other thing that Jerry Manuel was talking about before the game tonight about the uh, but to go along with the team speed, he said these starts we're getting are quality starts in the sense that pitchers are working ahead, they're throwing strikes, they're working quickly, and our defense is ready to go. They're on their toes, they're ready. The game's active. Well, we so really that saw that from Takahashi tonight, yeah. Well, so Brian Maddox did the same thing. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, that's, that's the way you want to get to exactly. Two ball, two strike count. 42,248. 4 2, 2 4, 8. Big crowd, great night, great uh, game. All over downtown. All over downtown. The Met fans are here. It was busy today. Yeah, it started yesterday because you know, us who live here in the, in the city, you can see it. Well, it's great. I mean, it's great for business, great for people walking around. Great at the aquarium. Yep. They were lined up for tickets. <laughs> two ball, two strike count. On Marquegas. Feliciano. Foul ball. It'll stay at two and two. Ever have uh, breakfast at Miss Shirley's? Which is down Yesterday. on Yesterday. Did you really? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, I'd go in there. I met Gordon Lakey from the uh, advanced guy for the Phillies at nine o'clock. Thank goodness it was at nine. Ever had that veggie breakfast? No, but I saw it coming by. Oh, man. It's unbelievable. It's called the Veggie Tower. <laughs> two ball, two strike count. And that one's going to be into right field for a base hit. Brancourt off the wall. Marquette is going into second base. He'll go in with a stand-up double, and the Orioles will get the potential tying run to the plate in the eighth inning. Well, he doubles up. You can see two doubles tonight. Look where the target is. Look where the ball is. Misses by about a foot, and you're not getting that by Mr. Marquecas. So the Orioles get a shot at it again here in the eighth inning. Ty Wigginson has had a single one for three. He does have a five-game hit streak now. Wigginson 0 for 1, the only time he has faced Feliciano. Yeah, they hit 319 off him, the right-handers. And that's a strike on the outside corner. So for if you're the Orioles, you're hoping that he will elevate one and Ty Wigginson would. 17 games without a, a home run. Hadn't hit one in June. One for nine. Runners in scoring position tonight. Outside. So in these two ball games now, the Orioles are four for 26. And it happens, and of course, if you're hitting home runs, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters, but it doesn't matter as much because you're yep. scoring runs without getting. Uh, Anyway, Rick Dempsey, I was listening to the, uh, the pregame. He said, I hate to agree with Earl Weaver, but those three home, three run home runs really do help. And we saw that last night with the Mets. They got the three run home run. They've never heard a cause. No, that. they haven't. No. Yeah, the Yankees, so they hit the two run home run and the Granderson Grand Slam. That was a win for the Yankees this week. Two ball, one strike count here. It was interesting because David Wright called the home run last night. Chris Carter. 
said after the ball game that Wright was talking to him before the game and said, this is your, your kind of a ballpark. You can hit a home run here, and you should hit it to right center. Well, that's exactly where he hit the home run. And after the ball game, they were calling Wright Babe Ruth for calling the shot. And he said, yeah, but it was for another guy. But Carter got his first major league home run, Wright. And he was there. Wright said he would. And he's a teammate of Jeremy Guthrie at Stanford. Yeah. 2-2 delivery and a slow ground ball. Reyes charging up. And Feliciano works out of it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Eight complete. The Mets have a 3-1 to one lead. About the one thing he's done, he's really been able to finish his pitchers. He gets lefties out with, with the best of them, only 196, and 9 for 46. Righties, a little bit better, 22 for 68, over 300, 324. And uh, the first, let's see, we got Wright and then Davis and Bay. So two of the first three will be right handed. This game, you're going to win it. You, you got to get shut down from Jason Birkin right here. The only chance. Wright, Davis, and Bay, 3 4 5 in the order. Wright, RBI in a fielder's choice. He has popped out and uh, flied out. Brian Mattis cannot end that streak of ball games without a win, which is now up to 10. Could be the loser. And the pitch is up high. Jason Birkin on in relief. Three runs, five hits. On the board for the Mets, a run, seven hits, and one error for the Orioles. Towards short is Terse. And right is retired. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow as this will be the final of the series against the Mets. Kevin Millwood will take the mound against Mike Pelford. Our coverage on Mass and HD begins at 1 with those extra presented by your local Ford dealer, followed by our game coverage 1.30 on Mass and HD and WJC. All the access you need right here on Mass. Yeah, it looks like a, a mismatch, and maybe it will be, but uh, Kevin Millwood really working hard on his fastball command. And, of course, that ERA was, what, three starts ago. It's been a little bit of a struggle, so... He will have his work cut out, and Kelcher's just added the splitter. It's been terrific for him. Here is Davis. He has grounded out a couple of times and reached on an error. There's only been one runner left on in scoring position by the Mets, and that was in the first inning. After that, and Brian Mattis pretty much dominated, but the Mets were able to get one, a second home run from Frank Core, and two 
in the sixth inning, a break on a double play not turned when Wright was credited with a fielder's choice and an RBI. Well, there's the closer having another terrific year. Saw him last night in the non close situation. That will be taken and a two ball, one strike count on Davis. Keep in mind what's up for grabs here is that the Mets have not had a winning series on the road since last September. That'll be fouled back, and the Orioles have not lost a series in interleague play at home in the last six. Of course, different years, obviously. Yep. You know, the Mets, as you mentioned, 24 and 10 at home. And they had won nine in a row until they lost the first game of the doubleheader on Thursday before they came down here. So they hope it's going to be get well weekend. 2 2 strike three call. And Perfect pitch. pitch. Oh, yeah. 95. Jason Birkin, I mean, he really has good stuff. When he started last year, you know, there were times where he pitched well, and again, very much like tonight, and it's a big strike zone. It has been since about the fifth inning. The ball a little bit off the corner, but again, it to the glove. And that's going to get you those close calls, but he's really. He just kind of figured it out. And also, the Orioles figured it out. And he's better in the bullpen than he is as a starter. 18th appearance. Two down, nobody on. Here's Jason Bay, 0 for 3, 0 for his last 15. The American League East today, both the Yankees and Boston have won. Toronto's playing at Colorado tonight. Tampa Bay is playing in a night game. Yankees beat Houston 9-3. And Boston, in the rain, at Fenway beat Philadelphia 10-2. Cleveland beat Washington. Detroit beat Pittsburgh. All interleague yeah. games. The Eastern Division tightening up as the Yankees are just a game behind Tampa Bay. Boston four out, depending on Tampa Bay's game tonight. Blue Jays five and a half, and the Orioles 22 behind. Right. Two ball, one strike count. Of course, the Mets are only what, a one game in the loss column behind the, the Braves, so this is a huge series for them. Two and one. And towards second base. Tony Alugo is there. And he gets it over. And Bay is retired. A 1 2 3 inning for Birkin. The Orioles, bottom of the night, trailing by two. Scott Jones and Tatum do up. Has worked in the non-save last night in inning, gave up one hit. He struck the side out, striking out more as Torres, a double by Patterson, and then struck out Tejada. Tonight he's got Scott Jones and Tatum do up. Luke Scott 0 for 1 against him. 
Vote for your favorite O's for the 2010 All-Star Game at Orioles.com, and you could win a Vote Orioles VIP Experience All-Star Sweepstakes. One lucky winner, four tickets to an upcoming game, VIP parking, on-field access to watch BP and a meet-and-greet with the O's All-Stars, and also get an All-Star Game batting practice jersey personalized. Go to Orioles.com slash All-Star for details. Luke Scott at 0 for 3. He is 1 for 7 in the first two games. Leading it off here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. And uh, Rodriguez has faced him only once. Scott 0 for 1. Tower and pop up in the air to right center. Not deep center fielder. Pagan is there and he's got it. One pitch and one out. Updating you on the voting for the AT&T player of the game. So far, Nick Marquez way out on top. You can still cast your vote. A, B, or C to 51862. The results on the O's Extra postgame show. And we'll bring up Adam Jones. Yeah, let's Jones see. Yeah, yeah. He hit his last time up by Tejada. Yeah, it really was. Grounder up the middle. He went far to his right. And because he faked the bunt, Tatis will play even with the bag. And this is Matt Wieters is coming on deck. So you need a base runner for two or three. That's the importance of that home run by Fran Cor in the eighth inning. Makes it a two run differential. A strike by Jones to Jones rather and uh, Jones 0 for 2 off Rodriguez. And that really makes such a huge difference if you're pitching. I mean you don't have to play the line. You don't take away the double. You can play off the line where you should play. Here's the 0-1. The Orioles, if they do not come back here, they have scored one run or less in 19 of their 44 losses. And there's only one run up on the board here in this one in the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, at this point, they're not a good offensive team. They're just going to have to change that to win ballgames. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way to Jones. Fouled off at the plate. It doesn't mean you can't hit. What it means is you're not hitting. Yeah. You know, Terry Crowley, you know, he's been here, what, 12 years? They've had great offenses. Was it his fault because they hit 284 last year with runners in scoring position, the second highest? You know, he teaches them. They go up there. they got to get the hits. You can't hit for them. Pitching coaches can't pitch for you. It can certainly help you, but it's up to you. One-two delivery, and there's a hit batter. The Orioles... It's not a pretty break, but it's a break. It gets the potential tying run to the plate here in the ninth inning. Well, there you go. You need a runner. You got it. Painfully so. You're just you know, back of the tricep area behind the elbow. Uh, Rodriguez puts the runner on, and Matt Wieters will be the pinch hitter for Tatum. And the Orioles are going to make it interesting here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Well, so what did Amber Theo Harris tell us? A little rest for the legs, working on the stroke, trying to get a little bit shorter. And we'll see if Matt Wieters is able to do something here against Frankie Rodriguez. One uh, for two off Rodriguez for Wieters. And did he go? They check. And the answer for Ed Rapiano is yes. That's the curveball we were talking about. He's not predictable like he used to be. He was predictably good before because the slider was that good and threw about maybe two, three miles per hour harder. Leaders hitting 250 left, 220 right. Three of his full home runs hit from this side of the plate. 0 1 count Jones at first. And why are you throwing over there? Oof. You got one down. You don't care about that run. I mean, I mean you're not going to let him cross over there. You might even think about playing maybe a step off the bag yeah. just to take away the hole. Rodriguez, here's the 0-1 delivery. Matt Wieters fouls it away and a two-strike count. So they would love to turn a double play, but the most important thing is that you get at least one out if you get a potential double play ball. And that's the way you play the game with a two-run lead, and that's why that Frank Gore home run was so important. I mean, right now, if it, it was 2-1, to one, 
He wouldn't be playing off the lines. I mean, Davis would be playing where he is. Jones might be able to steal. Barajas is only two for 21, so that home run huge as far as the way and the strategy of this game is involved. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way to second base. Tejada, Reyes. And it's in the books. The Mets come away with a 3-1 victory. Guarantee themselves a series win on the road for the first time since last September. And 3-1 is the final.